You're going to read a Gravity Falls Owl House crossover fanfiction and like it. What are you talking about? I already planned on doing that. Oh. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh. Whoops. Hey, everypony. I'm the Pony Fanboy. I fanboy for ponies, and you just listen. And today, we're going to be reading a crossover fanfic between two very popular fandoms. We've got Gravity Falls, which the last time I did a Gravity Falls fanfic, it was... Dipper goes to Taco Bell. And Owl House, which I only know a little bit about because I heard my brother Chris talking about it. I still am greatly offended by this satanic Disney show, okay? Either way, it seems these two shows really like to be crossed over because they both have the involvement of a guy called uh, Alex Hirsch involved. Uh, Gravity Falls was created by Alex Hirsch, from what I know, and uh, Owl House is made by Alex Hirsch's girlfriend, so that's why I think a lot of people seem to cross these two shows over. That and because they both seem to have elements of magic and, and other spoopy type of elements, so that's why I'm going to be doing it for October. And supposedly, this is one of the first Gravity Falls Owl House crossover fanfics, and it's called... Gravity Falls Upon the Owl House. So, I'm very excited. Even though I don't know that much about either of these shows, I am definitely looking forward to this. In all his multiverse travels, one of the most normal, well, close enough to normal, encounters he had was one with Ida. After almost getting eaten by a giant multi-slug, don't ask, Ford Pines found himself sitting with a cup of plum tea in his six-fingered hands. Bits of slime still stuck to his clothes, and a fresh bandage was wrapped around his one leg. Green blood dirtied the edge of his glasses. He almost didn't see Ida offered him strange-looking biscuits on a plate to him. Hungry? Ida grabbed two for herself before placing the plate on the coffee table and plopping herself on the other side of the red couch. She tucked her legs under her, nonchalant and acting as if she didn't have a care in the world. So, she started, taking a bite out of one of her biscuits. What's a human like yourself doing in the demon realm? It's not every day I save one from getting eaten. Ford straightened up. First off, my blaster gun is what finished that beast, and I'm actually here by accident. Ida scoffed, consuming the last of her food. Please, I know a multiverse traveler when I see one. The gun, the neck translator, the infinity-sided dice from Lottercon 9. Ford's eyes widened, his hand drifting toward the cheap plastic case in his pocket. Ida shrugged. I'm a witch, and that thing gives off some serious power. I could feel it a mile away. Ford frowned, unconsciously biting the biscuit. He had to bite back a gag from the flavor. The tea helped. I've done some traveling between dimensions myself back in the day. You could say I made a name for myself. She wrapped her knuckles against the wanted poster behind him. Ford eyed the amount of bounty for her head. Right. To think he thought the one on him was high. Ida's was ridiculously, no, ludicrously high. At least this means he found the right witch. Ford placed his tea and half-eaten whatever foul thing being called a biscuit on the table and turned to look at Ida in the eye, a sense of seriousness all over him. I'm here because I needed to find you. Flattering. I needed to find you, he continued, ignoring the teething in her tone, because I wanted to give you this. Ford reached inside his coat and produced a folded piece of paper, handing it to Ida. Taking the proffered paper, she unfolds it and raised an eyebrow. Huh. So you're building a... yes. And you want me to give you this? She pointed at the paper with claw-like nails. He nodded. It's vital that I get that. She sat up, a glint in her eyes. Hmm. And in return, what will you give to me? This. Ford reached inside his pocket and produced a small package. Opening it, he reveals an ember, oval-shaped jewel inside. It glimmered in the candlelight like light off water. Ida rubbed her chin and thought, staring at the jewel, then smirked. You got yourself a deal. It's a deal, Fixer. Ford ignored the sudden memory as Ida snapped her fingers and the part he was searching for appeared in his hands. In sync, they exchanged the items before exclaiming it, making sure the other didn't cheat them with a fake. Each were satisfied with the results of the product. Ford was getting closer to finishing his quantum destabilizer and taking down that demon that ruined his life. Forgive me for asking, Ida spoke, breaking Ford out of his thoughts. She was holding the jewel between her two fingers, holding it high and admiring it. But who's the demon that ticked you off? Ford bristled, his body stiffening. Could this witch read minds or something? It's... it's best not to know. Sharing the knowledge will only get you dragged into it. It's a burden I must carry alone. Solitary hero complex, huh? Eden once again shrugged. 
Suit yourself. Try not to die, then. Ford rolled his eyes. Ida's bluntness and rebellious manner reminded him of someone. Someone with his face. A slight pang ached his chest at the thought. Ooh, they're saying that Ida and Stan are similar. Ooh, they're implying that Stan and Ida may have been a thing. Ooh. Ford pushed it away, focusing on the witch instead. Right, according to my calculations, the rift I went through here won't open until tomorrow morning. Would it be alright if I stay the night? Hey, the Owl House welcomes anyone, Ida replied, the jewel now being worn, especially outlaws and owls. Or outlaws that look like owls. I do not look anything like an owl, Ford protested. Ha! Huh, there's that face again, all serious and stern. Everything about you is owl-like. How wide your eyes get, the way your eyebrows move, the intellectual and predatory look in your eyes. Even your hair looks fluffy like an owl's, she exclaimed, ruffling his gray hair much to his annoyance. Ford grumbled under his breath. Owls have feathers, not hair. After Ford got himself cleaned up, they spent the rest of the evening talking, exchanging stories and asking questions. Ford was careful to give vague details and answers. He didn't trust Ida, even though she seemed like an ally. He suspected she felt the same, keeping her secrets hidden behind sarcasm and carefully picked words. After a good night's rest, or at least as good as it can be when always on guard, and with the first rays dawn appearing, Ford quickly prepared himself for departure. A groggy Ida showed him out, wearing clothes that a middle-aged woman would. I didn't think morning meant break of dawn for when you'd leave, she complained, rubbing one eye. Ford adjusted his strap before he held out his hand to her. Well, this is where we part ways. Thank you for your cooperation and hospitality. I appreciate it. He pulled away and turned to go, but her hand came along with him. Ford grabbed the detached hand around the wrist and handed it back to Ida. I believe this belongs to you. Oops, Ida quickly took it back and reattached it as if it was a light bulb. That happens sometimes. Once again, I'm grateful for you lending a hand, Ford smirked. Ida gave him a bored look, hands on hips. Okay, bye now. Ford walked away, giving a quick wave after a few steps. However, the witch already returned inside the house, not bothering to glance back as the door closed, its mouth shut behind her. As he headed in the direction of a portal forming up a nearby hill, he couldn't help but imagine what it would be like if Stanley had met this woman. Oh! So that was a very cute one chapter story. I think the pacing in this was pretty good. In fact, I actually think the pacing was slightly better than something like uh, babysitting, which I still like. But I feel like this, it was very quick, got in, got out, got a lot of the major stuff that it wanted to do. It was very interesting to see these two characters interact. Uh, I like the chemistry, even though I don't know that much about these shows, I do think they had a good balance between the characters interacting with each other. Uh, very good dialogue and snappy quips between the two, which I'm assuming that's how they are with their characters in their respective shows. I would really like to get into Gravity Falls and Owl House. I feel like that the Gravity Falls and Owl House fanboys can help me with that, so definitely looking forward to getting more into these shows. Anyways guys, I'm the Pony Fanboy, I fanboy over ponies, and you just listen.